Hi students, today's concept is polymers. Polymers are very very important class of compounds which are used in our daily life. I'll give you examples of basic materials which are made up of polymers. I can start from here itself. The paper on which I am writing is made up of cellulose. It is an example for polymer. Similarly, the surface of this pen, it is made up of plastic and here I have rubber. Both the things are made up of polymers only. If you take other examples, the chair on which we sit or any other furnitures or the polythene bag which is used to carry vegetables or the paint on the house wall, tires of any vehicles. So, so many things are made up of polymers only. And being chemistry students, you should know the basic chemistry of such a widely used compound. Therefore, today onwards, in a couple of videos, I am going to explain about chemistry of polymers. First of all, let's see the definition of the term polymer. As you can see, the term polymer can be divided into two parts. The first term is poly, second term is mer. Here, poly means many and mer means unit. Therefore, polymer is a substance which is formed by the combination of many repeating units. Now, each such repeating unit can be called as a monomer. We all know that mono means single and what is mer? Mer is unit. So, monomer is the single repeating unit of polymer. Now, the process with which monomers combine together to form polymer can be called as polymerization. Therefore, polymers are large molecules or macromolecules which are formed by the combination of many repeating units known as monomers and this process of formation of polymer from monomer can be called as polymerization. Since polymers are very large molecules, they have relatively high molecular mass. Now, we can classify polymers into two types depending upon the type of monomers present. So, first type is homopolymer. Now, tell me what is meant by the term homo? Homo means same. So, from the name itself you can understand homopolymers are the polymers which are formed by the combination of same type of monomers or only one type of monomer unit. Now, the example for homopolymer is your normal polythene bag. Polythene is nothing but polyethene. So, it has many ethene molecules. What is ethene? It is CH2, double bond CH2. Why did I write hydrogen on the left side of carbon? Because the double bond is between two carbon atoms. So, it is H2C, double bond CH2. When n number of such CH2 double bond CH2 molecules combine together, polymerization takes place and you get polyethene as the product. In polythene, CH2 single bond CH2 is one monomer. So, when n such monomer units are joined together, you get polythene. One more thing, when two ethene molecules combine together, the double bond is converted into single bond. Therefore, in polythene, all the repeating units are of same type. They are derived from ethene molecules only. That's why polythene can be called as homopolymer. Now, the second type is copolymer. Now, what is copolymer? It is a type of polymer which is formed by the combination of two or more types of monomer units. The commonly known nylon 66 is an example of copolymer. It is formed by the combination of two types of monomer units. First type is hexamethylene diamine and the other monomer is adipic acid. Even though the name is too long, the formula is very simple to write. What is hexa? Hexa is 6. What is methylene group? Methylene means as you all know it is CH2 group. CH2 group is known as methylene group. What is meant by di? Di is 
नंबर टू एंड वॉट इज अमाइनो ग्रुप अमाइनो फंक्शनल ग्रुप इज नथिंग बट एन एच टू ग्रुप ओके सो हेक्सा मिथिलीन डायमाइन इफ यू नो दिस मच इन्फॉर्मेशन यू कैन इजीली राइट द फॉर्मूला ऑफ द कॉम्पाउंड हियर वी हैव सिक्स मिथिलीन ग्रुप्स सो राइट सी एच टू सिक्स टाइम्स इट इज अटैच टू वॉट डाई अमाइन ग्रुप्स टू अमाइंस सो वन अमाइन इज ऑन दिस साइड एन एच टू एंड द सेकेंड अमाइन इज ऑन दिस साइड एन एच टू सो वॉट इज दिस इट इज हेक्सा मिथिलीन डाई अमाइन इट कंबाइंस विथ वॉट इट कंबाइंस विथ एडिपिक एसिड नो वॉट इज एडिपिक एसिड इट इज एन एग्जाम्पल फॉर डाई कार्बोक्सिलिक एसिड Okay, students. I'll give you one simple trick with which you can remember the structures of basic uh, dicarboxylic acids. Please remember this sentence: "Oh my sweet God above." If you check the first letters of each word, O is for oxalic acid, which is the first member of dicarboxylic acid. M for malonic acid. S for succinic acid. G for glutaric acid. A for adipic acid. This is the formula of oxalic acid. Just two carboxyl groups, COOH single bond COOH. See, this is the formula of malonic acid. Just in between two COOH, you should add one methylene group, that is CH two group. See, this is the formula of succinic acid. Uh, in between two carboxyl groups, you should add two CH two groups. Similarly, you can write the formulas of glutaric acid and adipic acid in glutaric acid the two carboxyl groups are separated by three methylene groups so what is the structure of our adipic acid it is cooh ch2 four times cooh and this compound is needed for the preparation of nylon 66 which is an example for copolymer so what is the formula of adipic acid it has Four methylene groups CH two four times, which are attached to two carboxyl groups COOH, COOH. When hexamethylene diamine reacts with adipic acid, what happens? The lone pair of electron on the nitrogen of amino group attacks on the partially positive carbonyl carbon. and some electronic rearrangements take place here now the electrons of double bond shifts to oxygen therefore here you get c single bond o minus after some time the negative charge on oxygen comes back forming double bond again but during that time the carbon oh bond breaks therefore the hydroxide ion comes out of this compound and it combines with hydrogen of amino group when oh minus ion combines with h plus ion a molecule of water is formed and it is eliminated from the system and therefore a new bond is formed between nitrogen and carbon when that happens we get a compound of this form So what is it? NH two CH two six NH. A new bond is formed between nitrogen and this carbonyl carbon. So NH single bond C double bond O CH two four times CO OH is obtained. But when we take n number or many number of monomer units, the NH two end of this compound can combine with carboxyl group of another adipic acid so again one water molecule is lost in the same manner therefore this hydrogen is lost and a new bond is formed between nitrogen and carbon of another adipic acid therefore i had erased this hydrogen it's a bracket similarly the carboxyl group of 
this compound that is this end of the compound it can combine with NH2 group of another hexamethylene diamine. So again the same reaction takes place. The OH group of carboxylic acid combines with hydrogen of another hexamethylene diamine. So what happens another molecule of water is lost and a new bond is formed between carbonyl carbon and nitrogen of another hexamethylene diamine. So at the end you will be having n number of this repeating unit and the formed polymer is known as nylon 6,6. .6. Now why is it known as copolymer because it is a polymer which contains two types of monomer units. One more thing why is it called as nylon 6,6 .6? what is the significance of these numbers? See so students, these numbers indicate the number of carbon atoms present in the monomer units. If you see hexamethylene diamine, it contains 6 carbon atoms. If you take the example of adipic acid, it also contains 6 carbon atoms. Two, sorry, 4 carbon atoms in CH2 groups and 2 more carbon atoms from 2 carboxyl groups. So 4 plus 2, 6. So that's why the name nylon 6,6. .6. See students, if at all uh, you are interested in the actual mechanism of this reaction, I have given it here. So first of all, the lone pair of electron on nitrogen attacks on the carbon of this carbonyl group because this carbon is partially positive. At that time, one of the bonds from double bond shifts to oxygen. So you get something like this. Since the electron from nitrogen is attacking on carbon, it becomes electron deficient. It is shown by positive charge. Now, when the electron moves to oxygen, the oxygen becomes electron rich. So, it, it is CO minus. But it won't remain like that forever. After some time, the negative charge comes back to this position. But the carbon oxygen bond breaks because carbon can have a maximum of only 4 valency. When a double bond is formed here, number of bonds to carbon becomes 5. So, to uh, maintain the valency of carbon, the carbon-oxygen bond breaks. Therefore, from here, the hydroxide ion, OH- ion is lost and we get NH2, CH2, 6, NH2 with positive charge on nitrogen and you have a single bond to C, double bond O, CH2, 4, COOH. But a compound with positive charge on nitrogen is not stable. To stabilize that, the lost hydroxide ion from this step, it combines with H plus ion of NH2. So when it takes up hydrogen or uh, H plus ion from this compound, the HN bond breaks and the electrons of this bond go towards N plus. When electron is added to N plus, this positive charge is neutralized because electrons are negatively charged. So you get what? NH2, CH2, 6, NH, C double bond O, CH2, 4 times COOH. So the positive charge here is neutralized but the hydrogen is lost from it. That's why what is formed? OH minus combines with H plus forming H2O. So this is the overall actual mechanism happening. Just for understanding purpose, I explained it to you. But for a 12th student, usually they don't ask uh, mechanism and all in the exam. In the exam, you may write only this much. What is it? Hexamethylene diamine combines with adipic acid. A molecule of water is lost and we get nylon 66 as the product. So that is about today's video. Thank you so much for watching.